Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. It's another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and I'm gonna I'm gonna place a bet right now that we will not have had an episode like this. <laughs> the, the last five minutes with this man, stick around. <laughs> uh, I am talking about G. Anthony Joseph, who, if you're watching, you can see he's um, he's he's in a, he's in his home, home gym, and and I, I I don't know I don't know we might we might. We might have some physical stuff going on in this. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Literally. Anything goes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're I'm going to we're going to talk to him in just a moment, but for the audience, you know, remember all the things that you can do to to get more value out of these episodes and the other things that we do at Whistlekick. Why do we do it? It's connect, educate and entertain. We're trying to give you the best stuff that we can for free. Why? Because we want you to train. We want you to remain training, love your training, get people into training. Why do we want to do that? Because we believe martial arts brings out the best in people. So our goal at Whistlekick is to get everybody to train for six months. You have a tremendous amount of influence on that goal. So talk to your friends, talk to your family, get people trained, make sure they feel supported in their training. If you're an instructor, consider Whistlekick Alliance. We offer that to help you grow your school and reach more people. If you're a student, consider the Patreon, the training programs we have, apparel, come to one of our events any of that stuff. It's all good. And it's at whistlekick.com. And if you want to get the best out of every episode, it's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Gee, welcome to the show. That was exciting. Wow. How do I keep up with that? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Stop. We'll just end it right here. That was the shortest episode. You tapped out already. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's an honor to be here, Jeremy, it's and Andrew, and, and hearing about Andrew's background and your background yeah. is absolutely, yeah. amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing. Andrew, just, uh, you know, the, the audience can listen to this too, but Andrew yeah. is going to do the, record, the the editing here later on. Andrew, when you listen to this, uh, we were talking about what an amazing drum instructor you are. Yes, absolutely. I had yeah. no idea. And my yeah. kids, my grandkids are going to go berserk when they hear that. Yeah. You know, I've watched this man pick up drumsticks and imagine, imagine the, the, the casualness with which I pick up this cup of coffee and I'm, you know, I take a sip yes. of coffee. Yes. I've watched Andrew pick up drumsticks with that same look on his face and yeah. faster than my mouth can make that noise. Absolutely. Just, and, and that that's an artist, Jeremy. You know, it's, it's it interesting is. that I had to play a role once where I was a contract killer. And the director had me wear, I had never wear specs before. Okay. He had me wear specs. And he said the words that he used in directing me was, this is just what you do in ordinary life. You don't have to try to do anything but mm. pull out your gun and kill people. Mm. So... It affected every way. It was like eating breakfast. You don't draw the gun. You know, you draw the gun just, and you, sh you know. <laughs> it's old hat at that yes. point. Yes. So I, I relate very much to how, to how Jeremy is and what you just explained. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Andrew is, sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. I, I, knew, I knew what you meant. I, I know I can't draw. <laughs> yeah. I, you don't want me keeping beat at all, yeah. ever. It, I've heard from other okay. actors, it's more fun to play bad guys, criminals, villains. Is it? Yes. I, 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 it's, it's, You're smiling. It's funny you bring that up because most of my career was spent playing good guys, uh, cops, detectives, doctors. And then about two years ago, I did an audition and the director, Indian director for a bad guy, who um, he takes advantage of people in the desert. Okay. And I got cast and I said, why would you cast me? And, you know, and he said, would you, so this was up to two years ago. I was always clean shaven. He said, would you grow a beard? I said, yeah. He said, no, no, like a real beard. And ever since then, two years ago, um, Jeremy, if you look at all of my roles, they've all been bad guys since everyone. Every, it's just, it's just, except one or two, but all of them have been bad guy, and it's really fun. <laughs> I, I imagine, I imagine it's cathartic. Yes, yes, especially because, you know, like one of the, the, the things that he told me, which I would never think of, he said, gee, I don't want to see any kind of remorse in your eyes because this particular bad guy has 
zero remorse. And that was a first because usually you play the conflict. You do something bad and then you may have a little look that, and, but then you change and keep going. But he said, no, G, this guy is just all bad. This, this is a, a sociopath. Yes. You were playing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, what a trip. Yeah. How did that's... you get into acting? <laughs> um, my wife is here. She's watching me back there. <laughs> I was. Is she? I was... On, is, is she? Is she, is she, is she keeps giving you cue cards. <laughs> well, first of all, we. It, I, I was. Um, I was. What? Well, if I go back on the history of the martial arts, we can. We can get there. But I was yeah. actually. This is after the martial arts. I was. I went back to Trinidad to open a martial arts school from Baltimore. That's where I met my wife. And after about eight years or so, I was just sitting down one day. Um, school is doing great. And I said, I feel like I want a different um, creative challenge, something that's just like this martial art, but that keeps me on my toes all the time. And I saw a Chuck Norris movie. And which I one? Said, Do you remember which one? I don't, I, you know, I don't remember. Okay. But we were watching it on TV and I said, I could do that. I could do that. Mm. And next thing you know, we were on a plane to Hollywood. That was it. That's it. You that's just it. you said this is like what that. I want to do. I'm going to do it. That's it. Just have like you that. always been like that? That just yes. You get yes. something in mind, and you're because when I was ten years old, and my mother moved us from Trinidad. You know, we weren't doing well. She was already she was divorced. She moved myself and my two kids from Trinidad to America, Baltimore. We um, we at ten years old. Uh, that's when she put me in martial arts. And I remember, Jeremy, I remember at you 10 remember the day. years old thinking, I want to go back to Trinidad and open a martial arts school. Never changed my mind. Never. From that moment onwards. You commit? Yeah. Just like I commit to being in here, Jeremy. When you told me, when you told me that no one... Those, that those are the first punches I no one a bag in the history of this show. <laughs> Like, how, how could this be? How could you be having a martial arts show with no action? We got, got to get some action up in here. Well, I already told you, I can't keep beat. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't know if I can read lines. I don't, I don't know if I can do stunt or choreo. I, I could probably handle the choreography part. That, that, that part, I'm, yeah. I'm confident. So if, if you're always that committed, I'm going to put you on the spot. You said I could go anywhere with you. Your wife's in the room. <laughs> she is, yeah. When... When when you met her, did you know right away? No, she just did this. <laughs> she shook her head. She just did like this. <laughs> no, actually, um, yeah, she was one of my students because um, she. I was. I was. I think nineteen or twenty, and she was sixteen, seventeen, and she joined. She was already one of my students, and it was only a couple of years in. The secretary of the club, you know, I, did, I didn't have anybody. And she said, I got to find you a date, you know. So she would put, the secretary of my club would put me on these dates to go in Trinidad. And it wasn't happening. And one day she just said, well, what about Rhea? And I said, Rhea? It's like, she's my best friend. And I couldn't look at, I couldn't look at Rhea any other way after that. <laughs> mm. Married her in 1987. 37 years now, Jeremy. Wow, congratulations. 37 That's years. amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Now here's here's a subject that that has come up, and I've I, I've I've taken a a you know I'm I'm not going to hide the fact I've taken a strong a strong stance that s instructors should not date their students because it le it can lead to chaos. How did right. you handle that? Um, gosh, how did we handle that? It, you're, first first of all, you're in Trinidad, and Trinidad was I kept a very um, you know like how people walk into schools and they say Sifu or Sensi and I was, I was never that guy. Okay. I said, like, what, what are you calling me that for? You know, yes, I'm your teacher when we're in school, but as soon as the class is over, we, 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 we're friends. Let, let's go hang out. And I did that for hundreds of students. Mm -hmm. So there was, it was almost like a natural progression when we got together. It was like people kind of like, oh, okay. Like, you know, it, it, wasn't, so even, it wasn't even a big deal. What I'm hearing is from the beginning you were very good at compartmentalizing your role into class and then outside of that right now i can imagine that not everyone could handle that because i, I some of my students now they want to call me sensei out of class and i'm like that's weird to me if you feel the need to do that that's fine but 
just I want to make sure you're not doing it because you think I want you to. So it, it was difficult to some people, but especially to Rhea. Imagine to this day, Jeremy, to this day, she still says, I'm still your student. Teach me. If you see me doing something wrong in front of people, I'm demonstrating. Tell me. Tell me in front of everyone. I got to still like that today. She, so she she's knew, still your student. She's still, yeah, that's how she considers. I don't consider, but she's still, she says, I'm still your student. Let's go all the time. I'm going to, and I'm, I'm going to make a guess here that there are times where you reverse that role where you are looking for feedback from her. Okay. I'll give you a quick story. So I teach one private student every week, one. She's been coming for the past two years. This system, Jeremy, the TCF system is very structured. It has a true line from beginning to end. Okay. It's if you pull out one part, it's like pulling a thread out of a piece of fabric. The whole thing falls just apart. falls apart. Yeah. So she would come, see that door, see that little door back there? Yeah. That door leads to the house. Okay. So she would walk into the room sometimes, look on for two minutes and not say anything and walk back out. And when the class is over and I go in, she'd say, you didn't teach her this, did you? You forgot this step, didn't you? You didn't teach I said, what? She said, yeah, I could tell. You need to go back. That's, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, an, and to be able to recognize it like that. Yeah. You know, she's yeah, what, still- what I'm What I'm hearing is a very, very rare type of relationship and incredibly, an even more rare in a martial arts context where even even if there's a rank or an authority discrepancy, you're both making each other better and, and welcoming and I, that relationship. And I've been like that with all of my students, Jeremy. All I that, never that a lot. I never had the feeling that I'm here and they're there. I just it was just yesterday I was telling someone, I am just interested in making sure you're getting it right. I just want you to get it right. You know, whatever that takes to get it right is the most important thing to me. I want to see them get better than me. Yeah. I, you know? I, I think that is what... I, I, there are, are very few things that I'm kind of absolute on. But I think the goal of every instructor should be to make their students better than them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. So when you go to Hollywood, you know, you've got this <laughs> martial arts background... You were yes. inspired by a Chuck Norris movie. Did yeah. you want to do stunt work? Did you want to do action? Did you want to do martial arts on screen? Or were you I indifferent? thought I did. I thought I did. Until I got here and I realized how they peg you. Mm-hmm. Like, they, you know, if you're a martial art, you're always going to be a martial arts. If you're a dramatic actor, you're right. Hollywood. And I love, I love that about Hollywood. They, that has never changed. They peg you and it's hard to get out of that peg. Mm. So when I came here, um, I went back to Trinidad to produce two action movies, which did extremely well. And it was then I realized that I wanted to become established as an actor first. So I put all that martial arts stuff in the background. I didn't make a big deal of it. Is that hard? Or it no, because it's only now. Imagine that this is 1980s, 1990s, Jeremy. We are now in 2024. It's only over the last two and a half years I started posting my martial arts stuff online. So that now when someone called, gee, we see you have some experience. Can you? So they, but they don't realize it was actually reverse. You ran but these I, two I, parts of your life independently. Yes. And I think, and that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted to become established as hire me as an actor first. By the way, oh, wait a minute. We went on your Instagram. We saw that. Oh my goodness. Can you, you know, yeah. then, then that's what I always wanted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right on. And what were those early roles like in terms of learning that new skill set? Right. I, I have this, I have this, yes. let, let me, let me explain my question a little bit. Then sure. I'll turn yeah. I feel that, that the way we approach martial arts can be extended to anything, right? The way we learn, the way we process, the way we practice, the way we keep trying to, you know, iterate, get a little bit better each time. I imagine some of that was happening for you with yes. acting, but when you started, no matter how much training you may have had, you're still yes. kind of a white belt. 
So what was yes. that? Um, to this day, I tell everyone, you know, people ask, well, how are you able to stay so consistent mm. and disciplined about, because you could have all the techniques and you can have this teacher you can go to for drama, this one for dancing, this one for voice. You can have all the best teachers in the world. If you don't have the discipline to do it consistently, mm. you're never going to get it. And that's what translated from the martial arts to this day, Jeremy, to this day, it's about that dedication and discipline and the martial arts is what gave me that. Plus the martial arts gave me a sense of, my teacher once said when I walked into the classroom, he looked around at all the 40 people and he said, you ever notice how this man walks into a room? Like he, he, like he owns some kind of far off land in some kind of far, you know, one of those countries overseas. He's like a prince. You ever noticed? And I never thought of that. But he said he walks in like he owns the room. And that's martial arts. That's what, that confidence, that's how it translated. And to this day, I credit it to that. And I, my teacher always said something. He said, um, he said, martial arts was the only thing that didn't let him down. People let him down. But martial arts was the only thing that never let him down. And I have lived with that since. Besides my wife, she's never let me down either. <laughs> she's doing like this. <laughs> she's giving you two thumbs. I like it. But the, reason, the reason my eyes got big with that was because it's a, I think, a more eloquent way of saying something I've, I've said for a long time. <clears throat> martial arts is, is one of those rare pursuits that will give back exactly and only what you put in. Yes. Yes. But I think saying it this other way, it's 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 not exactly the same, but I think it's even more powerful and it's shorter. And I always like shorter sayings. Yeah. Martial arts never lets you down. And here's another thing he always said to always make sure that my technique works for myself and my students. Mm. If your opponent blinks, you're doing it wrong. It means he saw you coming. Mm. Very interesting. Mm. And that actually, it may sound like a joke, but when you think about it, it actually makes sense. Right. So movement. let's let's talk about that for a second because there sure. are two main schools of thought in in how you're going to achieve that that how you're going to move especially the initiation of motion yes. without your opponent seeing it. It's either yes. disguising that in some mm -hmm. other kind of motion, right? Maybe mm -hmm. your hands come up and that's, you know, in a, a defensive posture, but that's your excuse to get them closer. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is this is the Bill Superfoot Wallace approach to things. Yeah. Let's disguise it in motion, or yeah. uh, the way that a lot of uh, in in my training that I'm familiar with mm -hmm. Japanese martial arts to refine things to the point of having no extraneous motion whatsoever, and to be so precise and so fast in what you do that you move before they can notice. Which one? Are yes. You? That's just part of it. Okay. That's the basic part. And I'm glad you brought this up. So, oh, me, Rhea. That's her. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to the show. <laughs> so she's listening back there going like this. Yeah. So let, let, me, let me make this, let me see if I can make this very short and very succinct. Okay. Right? Okay. If you are, can you see our feet there too, Jeremy? Like that? Uh, cool. Now I can, yep. Yeah, I got yeah, so if, if you're watching most combat today, mm -hmm. like you said, are you faking the person out to go somewhere so that you, 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 you understand you're trying to get in there before they can blink? Mm -hmm. Are you just doing it in a point where you're not going to telegraph your motions, you're just going to move forward to hit them? Mm -hmm. Those are just... Anybody can have those qualities. The qualities and the thing that we don't see today, Jeremy, is relationship. Your outside movement has to relate to what you're about to do, mm. or no matter how fast you are, how much you can fake, if you meet somebody who can move fast and who can fake better than you, he's still going to get you. Mm -hmm. But if you understand relationship, you can even the score, even if you're not as fast. Sure. So a relationship 
would be something like this. If I'm here, I'm not going to dance around like this and then go boom and then do that. A relationship would be that. So I'm relating, see that? Mm. I'm relating the outside movement to what I'm about to do. So it's like feeding the person the disease. So the moment I move to attack, they can't tell, the eyes can't tell, I, is he just moving for moving sake or is he moving to kick me? Because it's one and the same. Does that make sense? It does. So, it does. And, and uh, to the so audience, just, if you're just, listening, this might be one of those episodes that you go back and watch because we're, we're watching some pretty cool stuff on screen right now. So, for instance, I had someone the other day attack me, mm -hmm. right? And that's typically what I do if I meet new people. That's the way to, to tell, does a system really work or not? Mm -hmm. it's, it can't be planned out because if it's planned out, anyone looks good if something is planned. But when you have someone in front of you, you say, just hit me. So they try to hit me, move, and I hit them before they move. I said, do it again. They try to hit me a different way. I hit them before they move. They said, well, what am I doing? I said, you're stepping. You're picking your foot up. Yeah. So the moment they pick their foot up, right, I'm either going to catch them the moment they pick their foot up or the moment they put their foot down or somewhere in between. Mm. They said, well, how do I avoid that? I said, you have to relate the foot movement to what I'm about to do, right? So if I'm here, I'm not just going to go like this and go boom like that. I'm going to do that. So it's always going to be that or it's going to be that. So it's relating to what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. What what? I'm, I'm going to make an effort to explain because, you know, the majority of, of our audience is... <clears throat> audience listens rather than watches, even though we, we continue yes. to post and we get more people watching than, than used to. But um, let me attempt to explain this for those who aren't going to go watch. In, in the majority of martial arts schools, stances are almost a, uh, uh, they're the last piece that you think about, right? It's in a lot of schools, the stance that you are in is, as long as it doesn't restrict your movement, it is deemed acceptable. You know, as long yeah. as you can throw that kick out of that stance, it doesn't really matter. What I'm hearing from, or what I'm, I think I'm observing from you is the stance is the first thing that you think about. Yes. Yes. And then everything else follows because if the stance is right, you are so fast that whether you select this hand technique or that hand technique, it has a higher likelihood of, of working. As so let's long, focus on the stance and the, the angle, long, balance, etc. That's right. As long, Jeremy, as it relates right. to the opponent, right? right? The movement, yeah. every, you, everybody's fighting in a vacuum. Well, let me just throw this. Let me throw that. No, if it's not relating to what the opponent, and if you're not controlling that, right? Then you're just, you, you're ending up, you're just exchanging blows with people. One of the things that I tell my students is, is there is no, in, in, in a combative situation, there is no action. It is all reaction. Mm -hmm. Because even, even if I throw a ridiculous technique that isn't going to work, I'm still throwing it towards them where they are in, in some way that I think is going to be effective for me. So what, right. what you're talking about is, is getting really good at reaction and so good that you're preempting what they're going to do with your reactions. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. that's really cool. How, how did you get there? Was this stuff you came up with yourself or was this stuff somebody planted the seed for you? Well, this is, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is, so let me see if I can. So in the system Kung Fu back in the seventies, I'm 10 years old. It's only recently that I, so I had one or two main teachers and then I got, um, I stayed with one of the teachers after the school broke up. And then there was one other teacher I remember, he was undefeated fighting both kickboxing and tournaments. Mm -hmm. And he used to come into this room and teach me too. And I spent 15 years looking for him. I finally found him a year and a half ago. Cool. So when I went back to Baltimore, we met up. 
And I said, tell me, because I'm 10 years old, you're teaching me. And you know what I didn't realize? He was 14 and 15 years old winning these fights. So I said, how did all of this come about? He, he told me, he said, gee, when we were in a room with the two main teachers, he would, he would tell me, he said, they would say, somebody would throw a punch, throw a punch, right? and we would move, right? To, to either block it or moving and do a combination. And they would say, stop. Why did you put your foot there? Why did you parry this way? Why did you not have the hand here? Why did you not shoot this? Okay, now go do it again and think about these things. And that's how this came about. Okay. It was, he said it was a very methodical, and he said the one thing they kept saying over and over again was, we will not be brawlers. We will not be brawlers. We want to be able to look like this under pressure. Hmm. So that's why the biggest drill they developed was that she, she can throw anything she wants, right? <coughs> Right. See, she can throw anything she wants, mm. and I can just be here, right, and be able to, to, to parry it or move it or kick or whatever the kick the case is, and not even think about it because it was re it, it's that reaction response drill of anything coming, whether it's a rush, whether it's a right, and you. But the goal of the the goal of the drill, you mean anything, right? Was to see that was to be able to stop, it, right, to look at it and not be overextended and sloppy. <clears throat> I think the other thing I need to remark on for the audience is the fact that she does not look like she's holding back. <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> it. Which obviously that that's important at upper level training, but uh, it's it's that's not a very good observation, Jeremy. It, it is, and and at the same time that she is not holding back, she looks incredibly calm, and so do you. Yes, there's, there's a lot of trust, and obviously, you know that there's there's the relationship here and, and whatnot. Yes, usually when someone is making a demonstration, they're going to use the minimum amount of speed and force for the demonstration to look appropriate. Yes, I don't get the sense that you ever go fifty percent if you don't have to. No, and, and, and a matter of fact, I was telling someone the other day, I noticed that I, I don't want to be negative. I'm just trying to clear up why we do stuff we do. But I'll notice when people are teaching, it's a little lackadaisical, but they have to remember. People who are watching and trying to learn from you are not listening. They're watching. Hmm. They're watching you so that if, even if I'm demonstrating, and typically what I'll do, Jeremy, is I'll pull anyone out of the audience, whether I'm, I've kn I know them or not, and I'll hmm. say, do something. But even if I'm demonstrating something, give me something, right? You see, I see, I will, I'm demonstrating in a way that this is how, because you know they're watching you, they're not just listening. Yeah. So I want them to be able to see how that technique works under the, the especially in this response drill. See how she just did that, right? Especially in this response drill, where you, sorry, Ria, where she has on shin pads, where you don't know what's coming. Mm. Hmm. To me, that's the true meaning of pressure test. Yeah. The true meaning all the time. Because you're only going to look the, under pressure the way you practice. And if those drills don't match, it's going to look one way in the gym. And as soon as you get into a fight, it's going to be a wild, crazy. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's, it's a subject that's come up on the show a few times, especially of late, you know, it's kind of the, the, the term du jour people like talking about, about pressure testing because it is so important. Yes. But of course, you know, and, and, um, I'm sure you would agree. Safety has to occur there. People have to be safe. Yes. Right? You're, you're not taking somebody in on day one and, and, and throwing no. full force, full speed at their face saying, figure it out, right? There's obviously, there's, however you handle it, there is a progression there. I don't want the audience to think. So G, G told me to beat on my white belts because they needed the pressure testing, right? Yeah, that's, that's not what he's saying, everybody. That's not and a matter of fact, she and I both hate actually seeing teachers teach students. You know, they're telling them to throw one thing and then they beat them up, throw them on the ground, hit them. I cannot stand that. I cannot stand that. I can't stand, first of all, anybody looks good telling them to just throw this punch or that kick. Right. But the other thing I cannot stand is 
to take advantage and to knee them and to just to make a point. You know, it's just I cannot stand seeing that. Yeah, yeah, it's um, one one of the the first interview that I did today. The subject of of when you're training with people, you are making a sacrifice. You're sacrificing your body. You're providing a service. Mm -hmm. to them that there, there's such an interesting exchange that happens in a martial arts environment. You know, the instructor learns from the students, the students learn from the instructor, the students are learning from each other. And if you're not showing up to say, I am here to make an exchange with you to get better because of you and to help you get better, it all, it all breaks down. And what you're talking about, the instructors who take advantage of their students, they're, it's one way and it's ego. And, and yeah, long time audience members know, yeah. I, don't like ego. I don't like ego at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, I think people, I don't think you make it too long training and keeping your friends with a lot of ego. Yeah. And, no, the, and the people with a lot of ego don't come on this show anyway. You know, yeah. they're, they're afraid of, of looking bad. Look, you had you had Bill Superfoot and June Ree. I listened to the June Ree thing, but wow, <laughs> wow! I I am I am so incredibly blessed. These people that I that I get to talk to, and and you know, of course, June Ree has since passed away, and so I that's know. one of those yeah. that I look at and I think, yeah. you know, I got a chance to talk to this man. And I recently moved, and I've I've gotten rid of a lot of the things because I, yeah. I I went from a, a, a home with two large garages, and and a, now I'm in a, a two bedroom apartment. But his book is one of the things that survived the move because he signed, he asked, can I send you my book? And he oh, signed he it. And sent I it heard that. Yeah. I heard well, that. He said, give me your address. I'll send it. Yeah. <laughs> Mo most of my, what remains in my library now are books from guests that they signed and sent to me. And it just, ugh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm That's humbled. great. That's great. That's great. There are a lot of people who start training and they just they teach what they were taught mm -hmm. i'm i'm not quite hearing that i'm hearing how do i make this better how do i keep making this better how can i make it better today than it was last week than last year and that suggests a certain kind of person so why do you want to keep making things better that is a, that's a really good i i just had this conversation with my teacher some months ago and it reconfirmed what I was doing. He is, he is leaving his legacy behind and people like us who he taught. But he said something at that when we sat down. He said, but you have to remember, this is my DNA. It's not yours. This is my DNA. And it, that just confirmed to me what I've been doing without even thinking about it consciously like that is like, I am not going to attempt to live through him. Okay, he's great. He does his thing. Nobody can touch him. But I'm not attempting. A lot of people live through their teachers. Like, if he's that good, right? Yeah. I want to be able to be proficient on my own. So it's the same principles. It's the same concepts. A lot of it are the same moves. But I have to figure. He's six foot one. I'm five foot seven. I have to, right? I, I got to well, figure out, yeah, how to make what he's doing work for me. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, back in the 90s, I'm back in Trinidad in the, in, and we're traveling. I'm taking the students back and forth now to see him in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And I still can't hit him. Like a lot of the class was just about fighting and getting this technique to work under pressure. And I remember sitting down. I mean, he just destroyed me. And I remember sitting down like this on the step and inside the, the dojo, with my hand like this. And one of my other teachers who, who was teaching me from the 70s, he sat next to me and he said, what's wrong? I said, I cannot hit this man. And he said, you keep trying to fight the way he fights. All I'm going to tell you is this. He's taught you angles. Step off the angle. Get off the point. That's all he said, which was a famous saying in TCF now. Get off the point. Jeremy, I went back to class 
two days later. And he came at me and I stepped off the point and did a roundhouse, caught him the first time in his face and he stopped and he did like this. Okay, he killed me afterwards. <laughs> but, <laughs> he, did. he did, he did. But he was but proud he of you. And he did like that. And yeah. that's when I knew it hit me that I had to do it. Same move, but I had to do it my way. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so when you talk about that that DNA of your instructor, I, I'm I'm going to yes. put it in, in in different words, words we've talked about on the show. The it's the idea that you'll never be him. No. At, at best, you are a a slightly worse version of him, but you mm -hmm. are the best version of you. So you can take what he's given you and make it better, because yes. you can't you can't improve things without changing them. Yes. Yes. It's the same with Rhea. You know, um, she is coming up in a class with boys, you know, and as she's getting better, they, of course, boys are boys, especially in Trinidad. Men are men. Like, mm. No girl is going to hit me. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and they're coming at her and the, the way that she figured out to deal with them at her small size was to take those angles and make sure that everything mattered. Mm. It had to matter so that they think about that before they launch again, which is how she fought in tournaments. Mm. So it was never like, let me try this, let me try that, let me do this, let me see. It, it's not about that. It's like, when I move, you're going to know that it matters. And that concept by itself, Jeremy, mm. gave her her own foundation to build on, which is why you saw what you just saw. If I'm throwing something at you, even if we're demonstrating, it's going to matter. If you don't block, you're right. <laughs> for sure. I said the other day, we were doing something for Instagram. Boom, right in my, I said, you hit. She said, no, I didn't. She said, no, I didn't. I didn't hit you. I said, yes, you did. Of course, she gave me a hug and a kiss, but. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I oh, love it. it. It's, you know, I. It, it is it is not a common thing for for married couples to remain training for a long time. You know, we've heard from a lot of guests who've come on that that you know their their spouse started training. You know, and, and it gave them a common language. They, you know, the spouse was able to understand. Okay, I see why this is important to you. But then they yes. they departed and they went off. But this is something that is still really important to both of you. And I think that that's definitely. I, I mean, all the time. You know, we are like I will just stop. Like yesterday, Korea come in the kitchen like. Okay, I'm thinking about this. You're thinking about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got, you have a live-in uki. <laughs> How awesome is that? She's laughing. <laughs> that's, I just realized I, I didn't I didn't I didn't know it until this moment, but that's what I want. I want to live in uki. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Yes, she, she and Mr. Dwight would have interesting conversations together. I I'm, I'm, sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. 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 So did you ha you had students before the the formalization of TCF? I'm imagining there was there was a a, a time mm -hmm. right. But you talked about before. Maybe the name is. The... Well, that's interesting. You bring that. I didn't even okay. know that. Okay. Because <clears throat> I'm learning in the, in the system in Baltimore in the 70s. I'm 10, mm -hmm. 11, 12, 13. So right, and I went back to Trinidad at 20. Mm -hmm. So now it's 1980, whatever it is, 80, 81. <clears throat> it's only recently because of Facebook and Instagram, which I hated. And my daughter said, dad, Hollywood is going there. You got to get on. Mm -hmm. So it's only over the last three years I've been there. It's organized. It's being, you know, stuff is being posted. And I got a message from some kids in Baltimore and said, hi, Mr. Joe, remember you taught, I taught you when? 1970, like I wasn't even Trinidad yet. They said, yeah, you used to teach us in the basement of your mother's house in Baltimore. So I didn't even know that. And there was like five or six of them. They said so-and-so died and so-and-so died, but we're still here and we just wanted to say hi. <laughs> so you've always been a teacher? I think from about 17 or 18, probably because I knew I wanted to go back home. It was all about going back home. I got to go back to Trinidad. 
So let me see if I can actually make somebody that I'm other people that I don't know who are not in the school um, teaching, you know. Yeah. But you know what, Jeremy, a good memory just came back to me. I, I, I kind of remember now feeling good when I was being taught and I'm coming up in the ranks and every now and then as I got better, I used to be called into the private rooms, just, hey, one of the instructors is late, can you teach this person just how to jam? I just remember that and how great that made me feel, <laughs> you know? You know, that there's, there's something so powerful about being able to share the things that we're passionate about, right? And, and you know, people who are new to martial arts don't, don't necessarily realize that when you teach, you actually learn even more. I mean, the, the, the ability to teach yeah. it, you know, you just, because now it's not just here's what works for me. It's here's what works and doesn't work for all these people on the floor. And you're, you're, you're collecting all these data points, right? I call it, built, you're building a database, but most of your training, it's like, okay, this works, this doesn't work. This works best for this person. Okay. How do I, how do I make this adjustment here? Yes. And it, it is, it's such a valuable experience. It's why I, I, I think everybody needs to end up doing at least some teaching at some point in their martial arts career, because you reach Absolutely. a point where that's the most rapid way to progress. Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, I always tell people this, that if you really want to know if you can fight, teach beginners. And every now and then put them in the advanced class just to throw something. Let me tell you, I tell people this story. In fact, one of those students, I just told him this story that he didn't know. His name is Omar. And he stayed with me for years after. I said, Omar, do you realize that the hardest I have ever been hit was in, the, it wasn't in competition, it was in the dojo by you? He said, what? I said, you, you were a beginner. I was just showing people how to throw a right class. I put gloves on you, right? And I put you in the class that I was training to go away to fight. And I was, I was the one teaching, I was gonna go fight too. And here I am doing this drill with you in the corner and you hit me with that same right cross on how to do it properly. I had just showed, I saw stars for the first time in my life, only time. And it was then I realized, gee, maintain your composure. <laughs> right? If, if, if you want to, I do not advise this, right? But if you want to know how good you are as, you know, as a fighter with your material, if you're an instructor, invite one of your first day students to try to oh. hit you because they will come up with the most ridiculous things that you never even imagined and you are not ready for them. And it's yeah. not just ridiculous, Jeremy. It's the fact that they don't have that rhythm yet. Right. And that's, and, and and that's what I mean by, by ridiculous. No, yes. you're, you're, you're right. That's not, that's not really the best word to use. Yeah. It, they, there's. Because every if you if you go to any martial arts school, the students are usually some mimic of the instructor. Yes, yes. There, there's there's a there's a common language in how they move, but yes. the new students don't have that yet. They haven't been either trained or corrupted, depending on how you look at it. And is it interesting? Comes that you bring that up. You know, like if if when I was training them, so if they're fighting each other. Right, mm -hmm. and I say, I say, one person blocks, one person attacks, and she's she's attacking, <laughs> right, going like that, right, and I'm defend, <laughs> right, and I'm trying to defend. <laughs> okay, okay, all out there. She is gunning for him. <laughs> the most, yeah. the most stoic look on her yes. face I think yes. I've ever seen of anyone. Yes, in in, in a yeah. In a, but my point is that because they fight that way, when I was getting them ready for yeah. tournaments, I would invite other styles or other people to come sure. in and just swing wild. Yeah. Because your eye can recognize sometimes great technique, but the moment somebody does this, you're like, are they really trying to hit me with that boom? And then you get hit. Because you're, you're like, <laughs> you know? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> here, here. Mm, I'm, I'm say it, say it, say it's it. Not, it's not a hundred percent. Well, I'm, I'm qualifying. I'm going to say it's like a 70%. Yeah. Have you also taught people how to act? Um, yeah, 
In fact, over the last three years too, people who see me on Instagram reached out and said, hey, I've been with this for a while. I can't get, is there any way, you know, you can show me? And then they come by now. And they oh. come by now. And, and the only thing I tell them is, if I see that you're not listening, don't come back. Hmm. Don't come back. I'm not, you know, it's, it's the same reason that I stopped teaching when I closed the schools that I had. I had one in Trinidad and then one in Long Beach. The Trinidad one closed up because I was just away after 20 something years. The one in Long Beach was closed because I got to see the transition from the 80s to the 90s to the where people were coming and going now. They didn't have attention spans anymore. That drove me crazy, Jeremy. Because I have this umbilical cord that attaches to people to this day when I teach them. And it's like when they're gone, it's like, you don't realize that you hurt me too. So I just stopped. I couldn't take that coming and going anymore. Um, so it's the same that I treat for people. If anyone that wants to learn anything that I'm do, that, that I do well, I'll tell them the same thing. You that, know? That's the sign of a true teacher, right? And so that's I was kind of deliberating on whether or not to ask you this question because I I, sure. I I got the sense that you are a true teacher, and a true teacher is teaching everything that they know to anyone who will benefit from it. But, yes, you know if if, if yes. it can, if it works, right? There are logistics, yeah. everything, of course, but you know this other skill set of yours. Yeah, this doesn't surprise me that you're. You're teaching yeah. people how to act. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. As, Thank you. As well, yeah. Yeah. Have you had a chance to do a lot of martial arts on screen yet? Um, besides the one I did in the nineties. Yeah. Recently, one, two, maybe one or two shows. Okay. And then recently, I was very skeptical about doing this. It hasn't come out yet. But someone who knows me got called for an audition for a fight scene. Mm. Here's how Hollywood works now. In fact, the whole world works like this. He, he said, hey, G, can I come over? Can you? I, I need to put together 30 seconds of me doing something. So sure, come on over. So he brought a friend with him and we put together some clips. And I made the mistake of posting it. Mm. And I got two or three calls recently, Jeremy, from some Hollywood directors. Hey, I've seen that you might do some. Can you come choreograph? So there's a good show. There's a sci-fi show coming out that I choreographed. It wasn't fight scenes like, um, like martial arts. Yeah. The family was a family that just brawled with each other. Yeah. So I had to put together some good brawls, but I was hesitant whether to say yes or no, because, you know, oh, my gosh, who did that? And then all of a sudden, that's all they're coming to you for, <laughs> but, you know? But if you've been at this long enough, and if you can play a good guy and a bad guy, and you can fight and you can do choreography, I would imagine that maybe this isn't how it works in Hollywood, but, you know, I haven't hired actors, but I've hired employees, and I want the employees with the most diverse skill sets. I understand that, Jeremy, but I always had I always had this way of being. It's what made TCS system it is today very laser focused. Mm -hmm. I want I don't want to be good at ten things or three things. I just want to be remembered for one or two very specific things that I can do well and I can pass on well. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've seen, I've, I've seen there are people who could do many things, but at just one or two, I've always been like that. And I, I think it has to do with, it has to do too with, um, you know, it, it probably because when, when my teacher was teaching us, right? Mm -hmm. um, this book is that, you know, and, and he said, punch, right? So if you, can you open? Yeah, you can punch, right? So let's say she's doing a cross off a of backhand, right? Right, right, right. It's a punch. It's a, it's a shot. It's a, yeah. but it's one thing because he made us realize if you don't get one thing right, and if you don't get it right, if I am able, if I cannot snapshot that punch in frame by frame and have every snapshot be right, then it's wrong. How do you want me to add 10 other moves to that? So that what you see what I'm saying? So even though you can build on that, 
To me, there is always too much focus today on trying to do everything rather than focusing on that one thing. So whether it's a whether it's a jab, right? Okay, jab and cross, right? A jab, cross, and kick, and then boom. See, you know, you know what I mean? It's 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 very, it's like we forget that each one of those is an individual move first. Yeah. You know. Mm. So that kind of translates into that whole, how many things do I want to get my hands in? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, the, the way you're describing this and, and also the way you talked about students and in in that, in that connection, you know, I think we have this, this false belief in the martial arts industry that, that if you teach, you have to take pe- be able to take people from day one and mm-hmm. you don't. You know, I, I could imagine that if you had someone who'd been training 10, 20 years, they might make a great student for you because they've got a, a base to work with. And what is, is the, that who you tend to work? That, with? That's that's so interesting. You bring that up because my wife and I have been talking about because over the last year, year and a half, people are seeing this stuff and coming to us from different styles. And at first I was like, yeah, it's always easy to teach somebody who doesn't know anything. But now it's a challenge to take someone who does something and how can I, you know, how, how can I adjust to make sure they get it too without them having to be back in Trinidad right. in, the, in the 80s? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's yeah. become kind of a really challenge. So it's a kind of a transition thing we're going through now to, to try and enjoy that process mm-hmm. rather than say, oh, I just prefer that they just hadn't learned it. Well, it's... It- <laughs> You're right. It's easier, but if you know, I'm thinking about when when I when I started training with uh, Bill Wallace, the requirement to earn rank under Bill Wallace was that you had a black belt from somebody else. Okay, mm-hmm. right. And you know, I, I, I I'm I'm not going to speak to his reasons, but if I was in in your shoes, I would be looking at it as yeah, I, I've, there's probably some unlearning that has to go on, but at least they've shown their commitment. They've shown that they're going to stick around for a little bit. Definitely. Because if, you know, I don't care how good of an instructor you are, if somebody doesn't show up, you can't teach them anything. No, no absolutely not. Absolutely and not. I, 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 I bet you could do really well on the seminar circuit. <laughs> I, I really do. I really, I, I bet just, you could. It's interesting you say that. I can't say anything right now, but uh, there are some people who are yeah. now organizing for me to teach one, cool. my wife, in, in Miami in August. So that's oh, nice. Quite- yeah, that's nice. I wonder. I wonder who that could be. <laughs> I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> no idea. None whatsoever. These are coming out in opposite order. Yes. Yes. So it is. recorded first, but yours comes out first. Yes. Yes. So yes. they won't so, have so, any so idea. I'm actually who trying to about. figure out how to do things that are just. It it will just make that person a better fighter or mover. Yeah. Even, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would love to get you to some, some whistle kick stuff because I, you know, some of the people who I know that, that come to our events would just eat, you know, just from watching it would absolutely eat this up. I'm thinking of one person in particular. Oh, who, so uh, oh, Don't make me just, cry. Stop it. Stop it. Don't keep going. <laughs> if, if, that's, if that's all it's going to take to make you cry, I mean, <laughs> but, you know, I don't know if I trust you as, a, as an actor, you could be putting it on just you know, <laughs> flip your switch you know you're pulling you your dark back. memory or maybe you pinched yourself off camera i don't know how you're doing that. Or, or, or you go back and you say wait a minute did he cgi his wife is that was that movie right <laughs> she wasn't even there <laughs> it's, all, it's all a conspiracy he's yeah. really single <laughs> it was there that wasn't go. a real punch that's digital yeah there you go that, yeah. that's what that's why you blocked all of them yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. I am so enjoying this, Jeremy. Uh, this this is a lot of fun. This is a really oh good time. Gosh. Yeah. Do you do you, is there can you imagine a path forward in your life where you stop training? Absolutely not. Nothing. I would there's nothing would that die. could come up that would make you say eh, I would die. I would die. I, I gotta die. be in here at least twice a day, Jeremy. For how many years now? Since I was 10, 11 years old, I would, I go, I go, I go berserk. If I miss one of those, I have two a day. If I miss one of those, if I'm on set, I'm, I am coming home like this, Jeremy, from Hollywood. I'm serious. 
like that. Boom, this, it's okay, should you pull over and sleep? No, you know why? It's 12, one o'clock in the morning. You've got to get home to get that second session and before you go to sleep, before you get to set the next morning. Wow. It's, it sustains you is what I'm hearing. It's, it's like food or air. It's, it is something yes. you need. Yes, but you know, it's like, I don't think martial artists realize how much of that translates to everything else they do in life, yeah. right? Because if I don't need anybody to push me, I don't need to read a magazine. I don't need to see anything online. I don't need to read. I don't need to see anything. Mm -hmm. It's so that it that is a reminder of how I am self motivating myself all the time. Yeah. You know, and just that alone, that attitude alone translates into everything else you you want to accomplish in life. You know, uh, I, I did an interview recently for a movie, and they said, "What advice do you have for young actors coming up?" And I said, "My mother." came to this country, I was 10 years old, with my two younger sisters, by herself. She worked from two jobs. For seven or eight years, I watched her do this. She worked from seven or eight in the morning at a secretary job, came home at three or four, dressed, was out the door by six, went to her holiday and waitress job, got home at one or two in the morning, and she did that. Five days a week for close to seven years, never complained, never complained. The only time she had a break was on weekends, the day job, the secretary job, she didn't, but she still had the she night did. job, yeah. right? And I said, that's, that's just not discipline. That, like, and so I said, so you're in Hollywood and you're complaining that, right? <laughs> Think of my mother, yeah. you know? So. That part of that discipline to keep going, that's where I think I got a lot of that from too. With her. And a matter of fact, she's the one. When I was getting beaten up from school in Baltimore, public school, and I said I wanted to do some kind of martial arts, she opened the yellow pages and she went like this. That one. And that's how I ended up doing this, this system. <laughs> that's what she said. That one. <laughs> just, just random. Yeah. Just random guess. Yeah. And, and yeah. look at what that led to. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. What, one of the games I play with myself from time to time is what, how many, how many things, how many incredibly specific one thousandths of a percent occurrences happened to get me where I am now. Mm. You know, if I hadn't met that person, yes. if I hadn't made that phone call, if I hadn't responded to that email, right? And our lives are full of them. And whether you, you think of it as, as fate or destiny or just random occurrence, I, I think, you know, it warrants some gratitude. Absolutely. Because Absolutely, you're, you are so uh, passionate about where this life has led you that you're going to put in your training time at one in the morning before you go to bed because you need it because it's such a core part of who you are. And I and want that to translate, Jeremy, when I'm teaching someone. Hmm. I not If I'm teaching a room and there are 10 or 20 people, I want everybody to get it right. I am not going to say, okay, let's go do this drill and walk around and just do, and you know, part of all of that, of me being that way, is for them mm. because we're not leaving this room till you get that jab right. <laughs> you know, what good is not having the jab right and me adding 10 other moves? You got to get started training right. in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> because when does class end? Class ends when I say it ends. <laughs> That's what That's I just it. heard. Here's laughing. She likes that one. That's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yes, you know, they, I, I was watching something the, the other day and I sent it to someone and I said, you know what I don't like about this? How, oh, they were explaining how there's a boxer now that he's shooting his jab correctly. Look at this, how he's doing it. And then they cut to Larry Holmes saying something and they were calling it old school. I hate when they use that mm -hmm. word. It's not old school, it's right. It's simply just right. That was the right way to throw a jab and a cross. You know, it wasn't old, <laughs> right? It's, um, I had a conversation with, uh, I think it was the first interview today. 
and we we talked about this idea that a student's willingness to trust an instructor starts out very high and then drops and then comes back up often hmm. right because they start to learn some things so you know uh, talking about a jab and a cross well yeah you know well i saw this youtube video where this successful fighter in the ufc does this right and they start to doubt and they, they go off and they take all these tangents and they try all these different ways and they say, okay, maybe that, maybe not that, maybe yep. not that, maybe not that. And I, I think most of us who have been training for a while have had these moments of, all right, I guess my instructor was right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the way they taught me was right. Where would I be if I hadn't spent all that time trying yes. to reinvent the wheel? Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, I had to tell the one student I teach, I could tell that when I was doing stuff, sometimes it would get unwound. It would be, mm -hmm. I'd have to do it over again. I had to, I said, you know what? Stop watching Instagram for a while. Stop watching all those things, that, lessons that are coming across. I need to get this into you properly first. Then you can go back. And she actually said, gee, you know what? You were right. It actually made a huge difference. You know, so it's interesting you bring, you had that observation and bring that up. If, if, yeah. you know, and to the, those of you out there in the audience, if you're paying someone to teach you something, listen. <laughs> and I know that, that that sounds ridiculous, right? It's overly simplistic, but how many people out there, it's like, I'm paying you, so we're going to do it my way. No, you're paying them, so listen to what they tell you. Because yes. otherwise, if you don't trust them, why are you there? Why are you doing it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Love it. Love it. Love it. Gee, if people want to get a hold of you, website, social media, you know, what, what, what stuff can, can you share with them for them to connect with you? Um, they can, the Instagram is at G Anthony Joseph, of course, G Anthony Joseph. Yeah. Um, I opened about a year ago, a very specific fitness Instagram page okay. at jet fitness nine, just the number nine. Okay. And because of the interest over the last year, um, some people have gotten together and they're doing some behind the scenes work now, building a website and all that stuff. Cool. Um, and the email, uh, the website will be up soon. The email for that is admin, admin at the G Okay. Yeah. And that, there'll be a website attached to that, um, attached to that eventually. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll have that, all, all that stuff linked at listen yeah, to yeah. martialartsradio.com for the audience, yeah. you know, folks. Remember, if you, if you, I don't think there's ever been a better episode for me to, to try to strong arm people into watching. Uh -huh. right? if, if, if you're, if you were, thank you for that, by the way. If you're, if you're, no, wait, 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 wait. This, before we go, we're not done yet. I got one more thing oh, to show you. Done? Okay. Yeah, right. no, no, you tell me when, when we have the last two we'll, minutes. All right. all right. Well, I'll, I'll let you do that in, in, in the closing. We're, we're starting to, to, to wind here. So okay. just make sure you, you, you check out these episodes. If you're only ever listening, you know, we, yeah. we've got, there's, there's the YouTube. It's at Whistlekick. It's easy enough to find. And I, I gee, I appreciate you, you being here. I'm going to pass it back to you just a second here. So yeah, well, real quick, whistlekick.com, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Our social media is at Whistlekick. Really simple stuff. If you want to support us, the best thing is, is help people find the show. It's the number one thing that we can do because as we grow the show, everything else that we do grows and it's just, it, it's a lot of fun and it lets us bring on great people like G here. So uh, I'm going to pass the ball back to you and I'll let you close us up. And there's, so this, this, this has been one planned. <laughs> this has been planned when, out here. When people come to visit and they come outside and they come to this, this is what shakes them up the most. Okay. So, most martial artists have a false sense of how hard they can hit because they're not used to hitting things or they just hit punching bags. Right. But this particular bag is specially made for this system. It's called a lock punch bag or a kill shot bag. And it's heavier than the big punching bag inside. Special stand is built for it, for it to hold that weight. Yep. It is hard like a rock. What's it filled with? So I fill after you stuff it with sand, you stuff it again. Then you stuff it with sand and you stuff it again. Then it rains and then the sun hits it. And then it keeps getting harder and harder as time goes on. 
And what, what happens is the reason why most people are shocked when they come in, they hit it and they hurt their hand is I try to tell them, you don't understand the physics of hitting something. If you're trying to hit something like this and slam your hand the way through, if, and they, what surprises them is I have no scars, no calluses, or any, where they say, well, how are you hitting it? Because it's all about the ability to strike this thing and snap yeah. in and out. The moment you drag, drag. you're going to pay for it right away. Right. And that's what these punching bags and all of these types of speed balls have people doing. They don't realize they're dragging their shots when they're hitting. If you hit this thing wrong just once and you drag it across, it cuts you instantly, right? Or you hurt your hand. Mm -hmm. So that I always bring them out here to see this because this to me is the ultimate test in how to really hit something from any angle and not hurt your hand at all. So that's what I wanted to end with because I knew you would love that. Yeah, this is this is great stuff. Thanks for being yeah. on the show, man. Thanks for, for oh man, it's, it's taking it's, uh... this ride with me. <laughs> and, and, and thank you to Ria. No, I'm fair. Come thank you to your, your live-in Uki. You actually? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Jeremy. I'm just so honored. You have no idea to be on this show. So honored.